That's amazing. And where do you normally search for information? I usually search on PubMed, but is there anywhere else where I can find a good science information? It really depends on level of scientific literacy. Uh, and, and the reason is, so I used to, I used to do PubMed um, exclusively. Now PubMed is, once you've found a paper on something, PubMed is fabulous to go down the trail of breadcrumbs. They've got down the bottom, so PubMed is, as you know, it's a, a free repository of scientific articles. Um, I believe it was founded by Hillary Clinton, for better or worse. Really? Um, but anyway, that's an aside. But, it, but I mean, I, I actually really like what the notion of PubMed. And it's got articles cited by this article and similar articles. And I find that's a really convenient way. Once you've located a, an article on a topic of interest, then the cited by articles and the similar articles that it, that's built within the PubMed searching is a nice way to... Um, just get a little bit more depth on the topic. Now, I do sometimes also like just a, a general internet searching, uh, but you, you have to be more mindful and often you'll come across things that maybe aren't listed, they're not indexed by PubMed, and I'll often find information that I consider quite valuable that's not technically in the formal official literature that bears some research. But you do need to be able to be able to sort out the wheat from the chaff with that. Um, and there's a lot of nonsense out there on the internet and that's where it becomes the level of interpretation, um, the ability to dis discern between something that's biologically plausible and something that's complete nonsense. So it really just depends on your comfort level in terms of doing that. But having said that, there's, even if it's in the published literature, even if it's through PubMed, you still have to be incredibly sceptical about a lot of what you're seeing because a lot of what is listed there is complete and utter nonsense. And I've actually got a, a lecture that I gave uh, in San Diego a couple of months back where I talk about the problems with uh, literature and how to how do you as a layperson actually interpret literature and figure out whether it's a whole lot of bollocks or whether it actually makes sense. And hopefully this lecture will be open the conversation about educating people so that they can uh, they can push back against some of the I guess more conventional advice that they're being given when it's patently absurd. Yeah that's amazing if you have a link to the webinar could you send it to me and I'll touch it to the podcast because I think I everyone don't think it's actually gone online yet so that that's that will good. eventually go up on the low carb down under YouTube channel Okay. Uh, but there's usually a process um, that was done at the Low Carb USA conference. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure. I'm actually not in charge of when okay. they get released. Well, I'll um, look out for it. Um, that's really interesting and I think it's really important because people don't know how to read those things and that's how lots of misinformation arises. But well, I'll, it's, yeah. th and it's also people understanding that this is not just accidental misinterpretation and a lot of the ways these papers are written it appears as though they've been written with the deliberate attempt to obfuscate the mm. true findings unfortunately yes but i wanted to ask you do you still send your athletes to sports dietitians or nutritionists or is the nutrition plan part of your treatment now to be fair i never did you never did Okay, so you do everything. That's great. I kind of knew it, but I just wanted to confirm.